Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of the Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox areas. I ask that you come to this time with an open heart and an open mind. Ready yourself that we may truly come into the presence of God and leave transformed as people living in abundant life. Hear the affirmation in our prayer. The Lord is definitely in this place, but I didn't know it. This sacred place is awesome. Genesis 28, 16 and 17. In your awesome presence, faithful Lord, even the sea and the mountains stand back. The rock pours forth pure water to refresh the weary and heavy laden. May we join all creatures, great and small, in acknowledging the life-giving strength of your love in all things and treat your creation as the holy ground you intended to be. Amen. Friends, our theme this week has been You Stand on Holy Ground. You stand on holy ground. This time together where we are joined through space and time in one moment, this is holy ground. Hear this reading from Quasi Kenya, the African worship book. An altar, a pew, a seat on the bus, a kitchen table, all become holy places when we confess before God, today, in this holy place, God meets us, hears us, forgives us. In this holy place, God empowers us with genuine love to share with the hurting world. Be for God a holy, loving people. Amen. Wow. What a great short affirmation. Have you started to recognize more moments, more spaces as holy ground? I think this is a great way to kind of rewire our spiritual understanding. In the midst of frustration, in the midst of anger, in the midst of sadness and anxiety, can you inside yourself, can your true self stop and say, Lord, this is holy ground. I think it's going to be a lot easier to do that if you can recognize this moment, this space as holy ground. Because it's easier when things are going well. Unfortunately, it's easier when things are going well to not recognize anything and and feel like it's us who's making everything good. But the more you focus, the more you spend this time when things are going well, the more you intentionally say this moment, this mundane moment, making breakfast, cleaning the bathroom, getting dressed, daily devotion, this is holy ground. The more you will be able to say this moment, this moment of pain, this moment of hurt, This moment of frustration, this moment of anxiety, this moment of great sadness, this too is holy ground. Lord, I am in your presence 
Because that's the truth, friends. If holy ground is where we meet God, then you know and I know that holy ground is anywhere. Anywhere we choose to meet God. We choose to open ourselves to be met by the divine. Our scripture reading today comes from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. Again, maybe a story that you're familiar with. I love this story. Now the boy named Samuel was serving the Lord under Eli. The Lord's word was rare at that time, and visions weren't widely known. One day Eli whose eyes had grown so weak he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp hadn't gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple where God's chest was, the ark. The Lord called to Samuel. I'm here, he said. Samuel hurried to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me. I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go lie down. So he did. Again, The Lord called Samuel. So Samuel got up, went to Eli, and said, I'm here, you called me. I didn't call you, my son, Eli replied. Go, lie down. And he he had to deal with kids trying to go to sleep. Now Samuel didn't yet know the Lord, and the Lord's word hadn't yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called to Samuel. He got up, went to Eli, and said, I'm here, you called me. Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. If he calls you, say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down where he had been. Then the Lord came and stood there, calling just as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel said, speak, your servant is listening. God bless the reading of Samuel today. A oh, wonderful passage that has a lot to teach us about, obviously, listening, but also has a lot to teach us about how we interact with the young. <laughs> I mean, you can get down Samuel, or Eli was, was kind of a mess and his kids were awful, but so it goes. But it, it does give us this great sense of how to how to relate to the young and how to relate to other people in their calls instead of just go to bed. <laughs> A lot of us have been there. Just go to bed. And, and I'm, I'm saying that, you know, in the context of parenting, but we do that with other people's calls. No, God's not calling you. No, that's ridiculous. No, you can't move to Africa and be in mission. No, you can't be a pastor. Pastors do that to people all the time. No, no, you shouldn't be a pastor. No, God's not calling you. Instead of saying, let's see where this call is leading. Go lie down. When you hear God, Say, I'm here. Because that moment is the holy ground. And and that holy ground in this story wasn't just Samuel literally by the Ark of the Covenant, where God was, they believed at that time. Not just the Holy of Holies, the temple. It wasn't the temple at the time, just the tent. But that moment where Eli recognized what was going on, that was holy ground. That moment where against his better judgment, this old priest who screwed up and whose kids were awful and, and, and wasn't doing a great job, couldn't see, he was probably grumpy, got over himself for a second and said, this young boy is having an experience. This is holy ground. And I need to learn how to respond. And and I think that's for us as Christians so important, especially the older we get, right? Because there's so many Christians that I've experienced in my lifetime who just continue to shut down things because that's not the way we've done it. 
because no, that's not how I experience it. Or that old stuff where, you know, well, I had to do this, so you should have to do this. Well, when it comes to suffering and pain, that's, that's ridiculous. Likely, yes, people have to go through their own trials, but if we can make life better, if we can make things easier, I don't want my children to have to suffer because I suffered. I want them to learn the lessons before they have to. Now, again, likely they'll have to learn the lessons for themselves. But all too often in the church, we, we, we stand in the way of the Holy Spirit. We stand in the way of God's calling. And part of that is because we don't recognize that holy ground shifts and changes. Or we don't recognize that holy ground is everywhere and in every one. We think it's just in our contained understanding. Friends, open yourself up. And be willing to realize that other people in your midst might be experiencing holy ground. And you might be the one to help them know that that's what they're experiencing. Friends, today we practice prayers of intercession, praying for others. And to do so, we use our simple five-finger prayer. And I'll put it on the screen for you so that in silence you can pray for those closest to you, those in authority, our leaders, those who are weak, and finally, and most importantly, yourself. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.